All right, welcome to the next lesson where we actually talk about customizing a chart inside of NinjaTrader. Here is a, a chart. Now, if you want to open up a chart in NinjaTrader, you simply go to this control panel and you look for new and you click chart. Now, when you do that, you are going to have this window pop up and that's going to give you the ability to choose whatever instrument you want to trade. So you select the instrument that you want to trade. Okay, so in this particular case, we're looking at the ES. And when you click that, it's going to open up this little window right here, which allows you to customize some settings. So the first thing we're going to look at is the price based on, we're not going to do anything with that. We're going to leave that as default. And the type, we can change this though, if we want to. So if you're looking to create a, a daily chart, then you could do that right now by going into this and selecting day and then how the value of the day. So one day you want it, each candle to represent one day. We're gonna leave it as a minute chart and we're gonna leave it as a 60 minute chart. Now, the next thing that we're going to look at is a load data based on, you've got an option of choosing days or candles or a custom range. So bars, days, or a custom range. Now, I'm gonna leave that as days. Now, one thing that I want you to think about is days to load. NinjaTrader can be very resource heavy and loading more data than you really need can slow things down. So if you think about how much data you actually need on your chart is really important. For this example, I'm just going to put in four days because we're not going to be doing anything but customizing the chart. That'll make it much quicker. Again, trading hours, you can customize this to see the, the hours that you want. Right now, it's using the instrument settings, which means it's going to show me all the data that's created from the time the market opens to the time it closes. And if I wanted to shrink that down to say just the regular trading hours, I could do that by going in here and selecting the right setting. Now I do have break at end of day turned on. Now what that does is it simply shows, you see these little gray lines right here? It shows the end of the trading day. And it's just a visual that I like to have on. So I definitely do that. You can customize this further by picking the chart type. In a previous lesson, we discussed some of these, but we want to stick to candlestick, but you'll find all the other types that we talked about in here as well. And the bar width, what that is, is the actual width of the candle. So if I wanted it super wide, I could change that and go, let's go uh, 15 and hit apply. Okay. You see how wide those bars are? They're really, really wide. So let's go back down. I'm actually going to leave it at three. So I'm going to hit apply and now they're, they're much narrow, much wider. Okay. And I think it was actually at one. So I'm going to go back to one and I'm going to go just like that. The other thing we can customize in this chart is your candle body outline. So that's the thing that goes around the body. You can change the color. You can change the style of it to whatever you want. And you can customize the width. So you can make the, the actual outline of the candle thicker if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it as one. The next is the actual candle wick. So this is the part that goes up or down from the body. And again, you can customize that to whatever you, you would like. And again, make it thicker if you need. Now we've got color for down bars. Now I've got it currently set to black, but you could change it to whatever color you wanted. Just remember that you need to be able to quickly distinguish whether or not that's an up candle or a down candle. Get used to whatever the convention is and, and stick with it. I've got some charts that I have pink and white candles. I've got some that are blue and yellow. So I have a variety just for changing things up. And the color for the, so this is the color for the down bars. This is the color for the up bars. And again, like I said, you can customize that however you like. Okay. Uh, the next thing is the label. It's, we're, we're not going to touch any of this stuff. We're going to leave it as is. Uh, one thing I do want to point out here, though, is down at the bottom where it says plot executions. This is where it'll actually show you where you got in and got out of a trade. And there's three options not to plot that. Markers only, which just give you the arrows up and down. And text and marker, which, is, which will actually show you text on the screen, entry, stop, all that kind of stuff. So you can decide how you want to uh, create or what, how you want to show that.
So we've created what we want here and we're going to hit OK. So now we've got our chart just like this. Now we can customize it a little bit further, but we're going to customize it in a different area. So we have the chart and what we're going to do is we're going to right click and you can go down to properties. Now the properties is going to give us a few different options. So we've got the general tab, which is uh, not, I mean, it's normally showing this. So we're just going to leave that as is. If you wanted to change the font, you can do that. I have no reason to, but you can. Okay. Now, one thing that I do change consistently is this right side margin. Now, what this does is if I was to change this to say eight, watch what happens to this candle when I hit apply. It moves really close to this Y axis. Now I find that to be hard to see sometimes. So what I do is I move this to say 100 and I hit apply and it gives me a border, like a margin along the side. That way if I have any kind of writing along the side or price tags, it's not covering my candles and I can see it a little bit clearer. And that's where you would do that. Now the chart trader, we're not going to get into that, but uh, I'll show you in another lesson about that. But this is where you can turn it on and off. Show date range, we're just going to leave this as uh, blank or leave it as default. Same with the scroll bar. Now the tab name, that's the name that you see right down here. Okay, and if you wanted to call it something different, you could do that by typing something different in here. Okay. Now, the other thing that you can do for customization is you can actually change the background image. You can click this button and then go in and select whatever image file you want and then select how you want it to fill. Now, if I hit, uh, let's see here, let's go this earth. Let's put that earth file. If I hit apply, watch what happens to my background. Now I've got candles on this earth, okay? now. If I change the different types, let's say fit and hit apply, it's going to be the actual size and just sit there. If I want to do stretch, I can, it'll stretch it out. And if I want to do none, I can apply and it's not going to do anything. It's just going to just fill it. And now I'm going to go back to fill. And what I'm actually going to do is turn that image off because I don't actually want it on there. Now I can change my background color. So right now I've got it showing as a slate gray. If I wanted to change it to say a uh, navy blue, I would just change that and hit OK. That's how you would do that. So I'm going to go back to that slate gray because that's the preference that I have. Let's go this guy over here. There we go. That's the color I like. All right, so change the background color. If you want to try and change the crosshair labels, you can do that here. And the inactive price markers, you can change that here. Text as well, you can change here. Then you can get into the lines. So the axis lines, that's th these lines right here. If you wanted to change those. So if I was to change that to say a um, color, let's go like, no, let's do something bright so we can see it. Let's do orange and hit apply. You can see how that changes the color. I actually like that. And if you want to change the width, you can as well. Now the crosshair, that's going to be the thing that shows up with your cursor. Again, you can change that color. So if I was to change that to say a navy blue and hit apply okay now you can see my lines are navy blue now it's really hard to see on that chart so i'm going to go back into here and i'm going to go back down to oh not data series i'm going to go back into right click go to properties and i'm going to go back to that crosshair and i'm going to change that back to uh, let's go with a Let's go with a linen color. We'll leave it just like that, okay? And then the crosshairs, I actually like to change it to uh, global with no time scroll. I like to, to change it to there, but we're just going to leave that there because I'll show you how to change that elsewhere. And then the, the style of it, I can change it so that the crosshair doesn't look like a solid line if I wanted, all right? And I'm just going to leave it as that. If I want to change the thickness, I can. Now, the other thing that I do adjust is grid lines. I actually turn the visibility off. If you want to turn grid lines on, this is how you do it. So this would turn the horizontal ones on. And of course, the vertical would turn the verticals on. You can adjust the size and the color and the style all in here. But I'm going to turn that off because I actually don't like them showing up. Some people do. And that's fine. It's all a matter of personal preference. 
All right. And panel splitter, we are, this is, uh, if I had a second panel on here, this would be the line that separates the two. Okay. So yeah. And actually what I can do is if I show you, let's go out of here for a second. And I bring this chart in. You can see this chart here is a panel splitter. So I've got volume down here and I've got the chart up here. And this line here is the panel splitter. And that is what that is talking about. So again, if we right click on here, that is pretty much everything inside of the customization. So we can hit OK. We've got our chart set up exactly the way we want it. Now what we can do is we can actually right click. And I'm going to right click higher just so we get the menu up here. OK, so right click. And then you've got this thing called templates. And what you can do is you can save it as default if you like. And that way, every time you open up a chart, it will automatically open up this way. Or you can save it as and click on that and save it however you want to title it. So I've already got one set up, so I'm not going to bother saving another one, but you can save it however you like and then just hit the save button. Okay. And now we're going to, and actually I'm just going to save this as the clean chart. So I'm going to save it there, click save. And yes, I want to re replace that file. So now this is my clean chart. And the only reason I did that is because I like this little orange line. So now what I want you to see is if you open up a chart, you could right click and you can go to templates, go load. And now you could pick any one of the templates that you've already created and then hit load and it'll load it up. The other thing is when you go to new and you go to chart and you have this window open right here, you can select your, let's go with, uh, let's go with MGC. So that's the micro gold contract. What you can do is just go load template only. So we can change it. If you set it as default, you could definitely do that. But otherwise, what you can do is let's go clean chart right there and hit OK. And guess what? We just opened up an exact duplicate of the chart that we currently had. OK, there we go. It's the exact same chart. Looks exactly the same, uh, except this is on uh, MGC, so micro gold contract instead of the ES contract. And that is how you do that. So that concludes this lesson on customizing a chart. We will see you in the next one.